Hello, my name is Molly, and today I'm going to show you how to use my favorite stretching tool, Generalized Hyperbolic Stretch. When that tool came out, it was really a game changer on how to make well-stretched images. Huge improvement over what I was doing previously with histogram transformation, and with what I've been able to get with any other way of stretching that I had yet tried. So I'm gonna show you how I use this tool on the Azure Imaging channel, we had Mike Cranfield and David Payne on to talk about generalized hyperbolic stretch. They were some of the folks who developed that. And it used to be a script, it is now a process, which makes it a lot easier to work with. And in, uh, I'll link their video for the Azure Imaging channel in the description because it's, uh, it's worth a watch. They go into detail on how it works and things like that. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I use it and describe a bit about what it's doing and then compare that to what I've been able to get from other stretching tools. So this is M106, which I shot recently out at my rig out at Starfront Observatories. So this is one I'll show you how to stretch because it's a nice example of having a, a bit of variety of brightnesses, both in the core and bringing out those outer arms of the galaxy while managing the background as well, which is relatively low since it is at a dark sky site, but is, is nonetheless there. All right, so um, we're starting. So I have uh, Luminance R, G, and B. It's a monochrome camera. I also have H alpha. I'm just going to show the R, G, B, H alpha image uh, where I've added mixed in H alpha to the R, G, B image. I'll show how to do that in a different video, uh, but this is uh, after that step. Uh, I'll show you the RGB because it's there's a step in here I want to show you that can help add colored galaxies where it's really easy to lose color during the stretch and have them turn out gray, which is another thing I really like about generalized hyperbolic stretch is that it has this ability to help maintain the color in the galaxies. So um, this is the unstretched image. I've got an auto stretch on it. You can tell it's auto stretched because, or you know, it's got a screen stretch on it because it's got this green here on the on the tab on the name of the image. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the screen transfer function so that when we apply changes to it, we'll be able to see it as it will look in its final form. So as you can see, it is all entirely black because all of the data is down at the very left edge of the histogram. And stretching is what, bring, is what takes that narrow peak and broadens it out. So you'll watch that happen in action here. So generalized hyperbolic stretch. It is now a process, like I mentioned, um, so you can find it in processes. I've saved a copy to my PixInsight desktop to make life a little easier. So you start out with this screen. And uh, so where I begin with this is I, with all the default settings, and you can even hit reset just to make sure, uh, this is the view of the histogram and it will show both the original and what the step you're about to apply will do to the shape of the histogram. Now, you might be wondering, where is the actual histogram? Where is the, the picture of the data? Um, we have to zoom in pretty far in order to find it. So uh, on the first stretch, I use the zoom buttons here, which go in in increments of 250. So we're now 500 times zoomed, way down here at a, a very low, let's see, what count are we at? Yeah, 0 0.0004. Uh, out of one on this histogram. Um, you might see that the red looks a little funny here. That's because I've added the H alpha and some of that got into the background. Um, don't worry about that for the sake of this tutorial. We're setting a symmetry point, which is the point around which the curve of our stretch is going to be centered. And this is what makes generalized hyperbolic stretch so powerful is that you can control around which point that stretch is occurring. And this is really useful for if you need to bring up some stuff in the background, or if you want to bring up the brighter areas more than the rest of it to, to bring out something. Where I usually start is I place the symmetry point about a third to halfway up the curve on the right side. Now, when your histogram is only a couple of bins wide, that can be kind of hard to find. So just estimate. You could put it right on the peak, but I tend to go a little bit right of the peak in order to um, get a nice, a nice symmetry point on that stretch. So you don't bring up the background too, too much. So I put that there and then you hit send to SP, which is send a symmetry point. That's going to set the symmetry point. Uh, now I'll turn on our real-time preview. This is very important to use the real-time preview. And now we'll do our first stretch. So I'm gonna zoom back out on our histogram here. So, cause it will jump pretty significantly as we do our first stretch. 
And so the red line you're seeing here is where the histogram curve is going to be. So on your bottom axis are the brightness values as they are now. And the Y axis is the number of pixels, number of counts inside of each of those brightness bins. And when you're stretching, you are moving that input output curve so that you are moving the histogram to the right where you can see it and it's stretching at the same time. So I pull it uh, a decent ways over to the right here. You can see where our curve will end up is, is what that picture is showing. And the red line is how we're stretching it. So I usually go to about here, um, but this is the really cool part about general hyperbolic stretch. Cause if I do this in histogram transformation, I have to not go this far and uh, otherwise I'll start, you'll see I start blowing out the core, right? I don't want to do that. So I'm going to grab this local intensity slider here. And that's going to reduce the steepness of that curve down quite a bit. And so now we've taken that bright core and made it a little more equal to the background. At this point, you could also move the protect highlights slider, but your highlights are so far to the left that unless you have a really bright thing in your image, you might not need to do it at this point, but uh, we could bring that over a little bit. And that is basically flattening, making more diagonal the highlights side. So where the, the brighter parts of the image are, bringing that down to help protect the bright parts of the image so they don't get stretched as much as the darker parts of the image. All right, so having made those adjustments, I'm now going to hit the square apply button. Now remember in PixInsight, it's cumulative. So it will show the current set of settings that you have on your image because we haven't reset any of the settings yet, which is why this preview looks all messed up. This is not what the image looks like. We just applied what we saw in the preview to the actual image. This is what we would see if we applied that exact same stretch again but we're not going to apply that exact same stretch again because we need to reset the points now that our histogram peak has moved. So hit the reset button down here and you'll see now that our histogram is nicely off the left side and is starting to work its way more toward the middle, which is where we'll be able to actually see the image on the computer screen. So usually for the second stretch for galaxies, this is where I like to do the color stretch. So down here in the mode box, we're generally been working in RGB here, but we're going to select color instead. And this is going to stretch the color space as opposed to just the image itself. That's maybe not the best way to describe it, but that's about what I got. Uh, so I'm going to, instead of, if I hit the 250x zoom, that would be way too much for how we're stretching now. There's our peak very broad over there. So instead, I'm just going to click on this box and use the scroll wheel on my mouse to scroll in a little bit so that we can see where we're going on the peak. And again, I'm going to go about um, halfway, maybe maybe a little less than halfway up the curve here and hit send to symmetry point. Zoom back out so we can see what we're doing. I've still got my preview open. I'm going to grab the stretch factor slider, which I forgot to give the name of earlier and start to pull that over. And so it's still stretching the image, but it's kind of putting more weight on the color as it does this. And so i uh, brought that up. I'm going to reduce the steepness of that stretch a bit. Now, once you get to this point where the histogram is about in this part of the chart, the local intensity slider actually starts to move the histogram to the right a bit. So sometimes I'll actually use the local histogram and move it to the left to reduce our brightness a bit. So the stretch isn't quite as much and kind of flattens out the image a little more so that we get more of the dimmer parts of the galaxy without blowing out the core. You could again here move that protect highlights slider if you wanted to protect something bright in the image. I'll bring it down to protect the core a bit. And now I'll hit apply and reset. Now we've come a fair bit off the left side. And for some of my images, I end up sometimes in the middle by the time I get to this point. But we don't want our background to be quite that high. So at this point, usually I uh, change the transformation type from generalized hyperbolic to linear. And this is back to exactly how it would work if you were using histogram transformation. And I'm just going to grab the black point slider now and move it to the right, which is going to move the histogram to the left by moving the black point itself to the right. 
Now, um, ordinarily you wouldn't want to clip into your histogram like I'm about to do here. You see it going off the left side of the histogram a bit. But because I ended up with some red in the background from the way that I did my hydrogen alpha addition, I'm gonna say that it's okay for me to clip that a little bit. Then I don't have to deal with it later. So I've moved that back a bit, hit apply, and now we've reduced our background. Hit reset. We're back on generalized hyperbolic stretch mode. I'll zoom in a little bit to select my halfway-ish point here. Send a symmetry point. And uh, we're back in RGB mode and I'm going to do my next stretch. So I'm gonna start gently pulling that to the right. And now you're gonna start doing much smaller movements. I'm gonna take that local intensity, bring that back a little bit, bring down my protect highlights to protect the core. Hit apply, apply and let dry, reset. And at this point I might do one more stretch. Sometimes I stop here at, when it's a little bit understretched and then do the rest with curves where I can add more points to this, this transformation curve here. Um, but I think right here I'll do, I'll do one more. And again, same spot, send a symmetry point and just do a little bit more. Bring that to the left there, apply and let dry, reset. All right, and there's our stretch image. And from here, I would go mess around with it in curves to bring out the galaxy more, reduce the background a bit, uh, and start making this image even prettier, m increase the saturation, things like that. Uh, now, if you've got, let's say you've got an image that has <clears throat> a lot of signal in the background, like some dust or some hydrogen that you want to bring out, then you could consider putting a point down here, uh, which is the dimmer parts of your image and uh, stretching that part. So I already hit reset. And so this would bring up my background more than it's gonna bring up the main part of the histogram because that's where I've set my symmetry point. So that's an example of that. So I'll close the preview window here, close generalized hyperbolic stretch, and then take it into curves, open the real time preview. And what I like to do is bring up the middle, which is where the galaxy is bring down the background a bit. I don't want to blow out the core too much. Actually, sometimes it's nice to kind of brighten the already bright areas a little more because it makes them have the more sort of a glow and give that a really cool look. Hit apply. And then I might increase the saturation. Now you can see I'm kind of blowing out the pinks here. So what I what I would do next is create a color mask on that pink hydrogen alpha. First of all, make it more red and then do my saturation increase um, without increasing that and then increase that separately. A quick trick as well is if you want to know where in the histogram a part of your image is, you can just click and hold the mouse and it will show the yellow line on the histogram where your mouse is. So here I'm in kind of a black area. I can see that's more toward the left side of the peak. Um, and now because most of your image is blackness, the center of your peak is where your background is. That's where the majority of your image is, unless you have a big bright nebula region, because the number of pixels that are dark is a lot higher than a number of pixels that are bright in this image. So when I'm in just a black area here, that's actually the peak of our histogram. And then in the galaxy out toward the edges, you can see it's to the right of our histogram peak. And then when I move in toward the center, that's when we get way up into the highlights where you can't even see the histogram up there. And then if you want to, if you're trying to get a specific area, you can click on that area, see where that yellow line is and hit send a symmetry point and then that can just be your symmetry point so you don't have to go try and find it on the histogram. Now let me show you how that compares to histogram transformation and mask stretch so you can get an idea of how powerful this tool is. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that and open up uh, this is another copy of the same image just uh, not stretched yet. So here's our screen stretch. Turn that back off. So this is the way I used to stretch was with histogram transformation here. And the principle is the same. You're, you're changing the slope of this input output line so that you can move your histogram peak, which is way over here on the 
left side. So you can move that out to the right and be able to actually see the image represented on a computer screen. But you don't have as fine control here as to where the stretch occurs. So ordinarily I'd, I'd grab the, mid, the midpoints, actually first let me open my preview, grab the midtones and drag that to the left a fair bit. But you see, I can't change the slope of that curve like I could in generalized hyperbolic stretch. It's just gonna be the slope that it is. So I'm actually gonna back off a little bit so that uh, we don't do all the stretching at once. Stretching is, is a very incremental process. You wanna do it in several steps. You're not gonna get the stretch that you want if you try and do it in a single step by manipulating the histogram. So hit apply, reset, grab the midpoint, the midtones again, bring that back, but not too much. So I can actually go and protect the highlights because if I move the highlights, it's actually gonna bring that up as opposed to flattening the curve to protect the core. So I don't have that kind of control in histogram transformation. Bring that back again. And you can see that, yeah, it's stretching the core quite nicely, but I'm not nearly getting, I'm not getting nearly as much of the outer parts of the galaxy as I am when I can control the shape of the curve better. Hit apply. My background's getting a little high, so I'm gonna grab the black point, move it a bit to the right here. Apply, reset, grab the midtones. So I can get, you know, a reasonable image out of this. And then I can go into curves and adjust the shape of the curve to try and bring out the outer parts of the galaxy more. But it's not going to do as good of a job of separating the outer parts of the galaxy from the background of the rest of the image. You're going to have to bring up the background of the rest in order to be able to see those, those outer parts of the galaxy because they're now on a more similar level since we weren't able to kind of pull them apart using this tool like we could with generalized hyperbolic stretch. And then finally, a lot of people like to use masked stretch. So I'll show what that looks like. Uh, I've created a preview here of the background um, using the uh, new preview mode button here, drawing a box. Go ahead and turn off my screen stretch, open masked stretch. Uh, I messed around with this earlier, so I already know that I'm going to set a target background of 0.25 and then um, select my preview here as the background reference and hit go. Split up the video there so you don't have to just sit and watch it go. And you can see it's not super great here. Um, I could definitely go and mess with those parameters a bit. Change that back to 0.125, see what happens. Eh, not quite there. And I'm, I'm sure that there's a way I could massage the values in this box to get a reasonable image. But I find that masked stretch tends to leave the image a little too flat, where you have kind of a high background and kind of a low target in your image and they're a little closer and level to each other and don't have quite as much contrast and you have to go mess with curves to try and bring that back after the stretch and then you end up losing some of the dimmer parts when you do that and you just again don't have as much control with with a tool like this sometimes this is helpful i've gotten it to work nicely for some images but by and large i have a lot more control with generalized hyperbolic stretch and that's what i've got